I started out moving around a lot in life. My father worked for the military. He wasn't in the military, but he worked for the military. So we moved around on average every three years. So where do you go when you're in a new place and you don't know where to go? We went to the library, everywhere we went. I've been to libraries all around Ontario and Quebec. <laughs> and it became a happy place. And I say that all the time, but that's all there is to it. It's my happy place. It's where I go where I can feel comfortable. It's where I go where I belong automatically. And I can find all my best friends in all the books. <laughs> it's, uh, it's where my heart is. Funny enough, what helped me more than anything was my background in administration. So I got the job at the library here primarily as a part-timer in 2011. I was working, going to the different branches, um, about 14 hours a week I was working. Then, um, and my background is in history, I have a, a degree in history from McGill University, and um, a lot of administrative work leading up to here. But the thing is, history is about a whole bunch of things. It's about economics, it's about arts, culture, community, it's about all those things. And I have a way of reading things. I'm catch on quick and I'm able to read my audience. So that has always helped me a lot. I've always been pretty good at knowing what people need and getting the job done. So I quickly graduated to being the person who orders the books here, which I have to tell you was a lot of fun. Being able to touch the books, looking up catalogs. My job was actually ordering, shopping, and buying books. I had a lot of fun there, but I also started to help a little bit more with the administration, budget, stuff like that, which I'm very good at. Um, while it's very important to have a master's in library studies, and most CEOs do, not all of them, but most CEOs of libraries do have it. I don't have that, but I have a very strong admin background. So when we had the need for it, my predecessor was no longer here, I stepped in as acting CEO. And apparently I did a really good job of it and was offered the position permanently. And I have to admit, I feel like a fish in water I've really taken to it. It feels like it was made for me or I was made for the job, vice versa, what have you. It's, it's my job. And I really feel that I do a pretty good job of it. Um, I've read books voraciously since a very young age. I won contests in schools for most books read in the entire year. I used to speed read. I just if I'm not reading something, I'm uncomfortable. I'm jittery. <laughs> um, just a book to me has always got to be on my bedside table because if there's no book, then what am I going to read? A cereal box? I would. If, if pressed, I will read a cereal box. But um, no, it's, it's, it's uh, necessary for life to read in my case. <laughs> it's a necessity. Well, probably a little bit of that in, in most cases, in my case, escape, um, being the new kid all the time. But I think you have a variety of people that come into the library. We've got a lot of people who come here just to hang out, and that's fine. It doesn't have to be all about the books. In fact, libraries are not all about the books. But I mean, we do have a large number of people who are voracious readers who come in here. But we also get those who want to come for the activities. Programming is huge in libraries now. It's not just the reading, it's not just the books. There's all the activities we offer and e-resources. We have e-resources so people can do their research for school on those. So it's, it's, it's not just books. And, and that's where a lot of interesting concepts come along that libraries are not necessary anymore. Libraries are more necessary than ever. In this very fast world, people need some place that can ground them. They need some place they can go that they feel safe. Libraries are still considered one of the safest places in a community. People view it as a safe place. And it's somewhere where you're always welcome. We can't deny people access to the library and all its resources. Everything's free. So it's a necessity in a community and it helps a community thrive and it helps a community come together.
That's right. We even had a uh, Hogwarts Halloween, which was very popular. Funny enough, it was aimed at children, but we had an awful lot of Harry Potter fans that were a little bit older, <laughs> um, which we don't normally see. We even had a few adults stopping by just to come see Hogwarts. So the target audience for Halloween party, let's say, is the children, but that one kind of hit all the targets. But we do have a lot more for adults as well. We're trying to branch out into the teens. And uh, I, I wish we could do more, but there's only so many hours in a day. So, uh, and, and so much in, you know, in the pocketbook kind of thing, the proverbial pocketbook. But um, I, I think we're doing well. We keep adding, we keep coming up with new ideas. And uh, our patrons say we're doing a good job. They're enjoying it. They keep coming back. So I think, uh, I think it's going well. It can get quite loud in here, <laughs> as, as you can attest to. Um, no, we don't shush people, in, I mean, unless it's a bit excessive, but um, no, kids come here, like I said a while ago, kids come here to play PS4 in the afternoon from the high schools. So it's, it's not at all the same place. It's more about books, more than just books. Books are the background and the spine of the library, but there's more to the person or the library than just that spine. There's so much more, and uh, it's what makes it a magical place. <sighs> I wanted to work in a museum. Yeah. But when I started working here, I realized this is what I had always wanted. I guess it had never occurred to me that I could work here. I could work in a library. I always went to libraries, but it didn't occur to me to why don't I target that as a career choice? But once I stepped foot in this place, I never wanted to leave. And funny enough, myself, my staff, this place is a labor of love. We love this place. And we, we don't necessarily work here for high salary. Librarians don't make a lot of money. I mean, it's a service industry. But we love the library and we love what it does for the community. Most people that get hired on here have already been patrons that come here a lot but they just love it so much they've been looking for a job opening and they get it. it it's actually quite surprising. I wish we had more people that knew where we were, which I find, you know, it'd be nice to get the word out. And that's what we try to do on a weekly basis is try to get the word out. You try to get the word out. Thank you very much, Derek. But um, yes, there are still those that don't know we're here. I think everybody in town should have a library card. Not everybody does, but we're getting closer. Every year we get a little bit closer to more and more. A higher percentage of, of people in the community have cards. So it's, it's getting there. It's a work in progress. Ha! <laughs> well, that's not an easy one, is it? I think it will look very similar to the way it is now. I think there'll be more technology. I still believe it's going to be somewhere for people to go. In, in the world of technology, you have so many people now staying at home, working from home, doing their groceries from home, but people still need somewhere to go. And I think libraries will actually expand more. There'll be more programs. There'll be more activities for, for everybody to enjoy because people will need that. They need to go somewhere. They need something to do with their kids on March break. They need the kids to read during the summer. And I don't think that's going to change so much. I think it, what's going to change is the number of books, perhaps, the number of technology we have, like little robots, stuff like that. Because kids come here to learn, too. And we have that. We have little robots for them to play with. But I, I don't think it's going to be much different. It'll probably be a louder place. That's, that's true. I would like to see more of a place where teens feel comfortable. I worry about teens they don't always find the library on their own and I think it's somewhere that would be good for them so we try to make it welcoming for everybody including the teens because I think we have to watch out for them and make something for them as well absolutely and we actually have a lot of seniors that come to the library we have some programs already that we have in place for Mostly it ends up being retirees, just because it's during the day or what have you. But um, they come in here on their own to read the newspaper, use the computer, 
and these things aren't going to go away. And actually, you even have, if I could just go on another tangent here, on a different tangent here, when I visit different libraries, like in Ottawa, let's say, I went to the library at Elmville Acres, and there are a lot more immigrants that attend, that go to that library. And I noticed they're using the computer, they're looking up things on the different government agencies, different help organizations. That's not going to change. There will always be new people to neighborhoods, new people wanting to know what's going on in my community. And that's what a library is for. A library is where you go to bring them all together and where you can go to get all the information and get the help you need to find the information. So I don't think that will change. I really don't. And I want to be there. I want us to be there to help everybody that comes to Clarence Rockland. Well, I would be surprised if people didn't know about this, but most kids in our, in, in our community know about the TD Summer Reading Club. We run a, reading, a summer reading club that is accessible for kids under the age of six all the way up to kids age 15. And it's very popular, it gets more and more popular every year, so that one's a very important one. We also have a number of book clubs. We have movie nights, we have movie weekends, we have, um, did I mention bridge, bridge club? We have a bridge club, which is very popular as well. So there's a lot of different programs going on. Uh, all you have to do is ask us. We have a calendar at the front desk. You ask us or you go on our website and you'll see all the list of different activities we have going on. It's, uh, it's plum for the picking. There's something for everyone. Absolutely. And that's what you have to do. You have to keep an ear to the community.